mics on. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I call this meeting to order. I have been asked to chair because Mike Jones uh, is not coming today. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, do I hear a motion to approve last month's minutes? I'll move. A second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The minutes are approved from May. Uh, and now, did. Everybody get a chance. I, I sent out um, the current ordinance and also a page that um, Hope wrote. And did you all get it? Yes. I think I'm going to read. You want me to read it? You want to you, read it? You read it. Okay. 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 To put it in the, so it goes in. It's uh, just addressed to the commission. You've all had a chance to read other sample ordinances and see their similarities to the one we are proposing. Um, I mean, I'm putting in, I put in the point Pleasant Beach, um, which refers to invasive plants, to serve as an example. This is much more detailed than we suggest. We want this ordinance to be simple and to the point with plain definitions, which would be explained either as part of the ordinance or added as a regulation, uh, assuming that this is a legal or procedural decision. We also strongly believe that an enforcement clause must be in the basic ordinance, and please see the Point Pleasant Beach section. Um, below or on the back. As we explained before, this proposal specifically states that views of invasive plants will be from the street view only. No one will enter the boundaries of private property. We propose that the Environmental Commission members have authority to report invasives as they see them. And then something for us to discuss, should private citizens have a way to report as well. When the presence of invasives is established and proven, there must be enforcement. We suggest a series of reminders, beginning with a letter from the city noting the presence of invasives and setting a time limit on their removal. I suggested one month, but I see that the sample we're using suggests 90 days, and that's open for discussion. After that time, a code enforcement, not zoning officer, should check to see if the plants have been removed or if progress is underway. If not, another letter with a warning and a shorter time limit. At what point, this is for discussion, does the city enforcement become stricter? And then attached was the Point Pleasant Beach section that I suggested we adapt as, as um, regulation, as law and enforcement, but that's open for discussion as well. And then Evelyn sent the, the current, I took current proposed, the current proposed. I took some of the Point Pleasant uh, wording. Some of it was already there, so I, I must have used it originally, but I added some stricter regulation from theirs. You can, section 5 uh, has become um, more about uh, penalties for not following the warnings. Do we have any uh, discussion on this? For the water conservation ordinance, there's a form that the city, for the water conservation ordinance, there's a form that the city provides so that people can report violations. Oh. And there's actually a like structure, like a penalty fine structure that increases with each violation. So mm -hmm. it's not as if that method would be new. Right. It's Cape already here. It's already here, so yeah. we could it, it, it could right. become a part of this. We can just essentially lift it and, mm -hmm. and add it to that, or um, I, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I could I could take theirs and see. You know, it would it uh, work without changing? Take the the water con or should we can just say uh, invasive and. It would need to be adapted, but okay. you know, well, that's simple it's, enough. It already that process already, already exists. Okay. Right. right. Okay. I'm not sure that we uh, go after anyone who's, for instance, watering their grass while it's raining. No, we should. We should. Sure we should. <laughs> but that's another meeting. Right. Right. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Are there any? Uh, I'm not on my phone. I'm reading the ordinance. Okay. There, I'm sorry. I <laughs> just want to make sure that's. Well, you are on your phone, but. <laughs> uh, but I am. Sorry. But is there any discussion about this particular ordinance? Did the way we, it. Did we decide the on the reads. 12? Pardon me? Did we decide on the 12 plants or. Yeah. That's kind of been in the, in the work oh, a long time. Oh, actually. Yeah, the, actually, I, I realized that there's a 11 and 12 are the same. So we should cross out 12. But I think that was even before I came on, that was already mm -hmm. this proposal. So yeah. that has been. We took the dirty dozen um, from New Jersey Audubon. Okay. okay. Um, and the other question is we are allowed to, for lack of a better term, we're allowed to what? For lack of a better term, rat. How about, how about um, I'm sorry. To, we, well, report. We, propose is we, are we can report. To report. Okay, from, excuse me, we, report. If we see her walking down the street and we see an overgrown ivy yard, Bam, bamboo. Or bamboo. Yes, bamboo. <laughs> or any of these on this okay. list, we, what, what we're asking for is the authority of members of this commission to report it to code enforcement, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and one of the questions we have is do, do citizens have the same right not to walk into somebody's yard and say, you know, I accuse you of growing ivy, but to do the same thing, either to complete a form or whatever the process is. And, I believe that's, and that's, that's, part I believe of that's in here. Any citizen in section four, any citizen may report a violation to code enforcement. And I think that that was one of the provisions that got this killed the last really? time with council. Oh, what? I, I'm, what I'm saying is that if you put an ordinance out that has neighbors telling on neighbors, um, it's not gonna be welcomed. It's not gonna be welcomed at all. And I think you'll probably hear that from other city members. So, I mean, there should be no, Look, if you see bamboo, I think you should be able to tell a member of the commission, would you go look at this house? That I'm might be a good thing, but they that, shouldn't the be. The way to do it is maybe take that clause out, but how would we then keep, <clears throat> keep it um, understood that people can come to the environmental, or do we just assume I, that people know that? I, well, I would hope people would know that, okay. And to be honest with you. I, and I, th So there's another... <laughs> I have a little story, which is that kind of amazing because I was getting my bike out of the shed to come here when I had a neighbor stop and ask me where I was going. And I told her to environmental commission, oh, what are you doing today? Uh, invasive species. And she said, good. Ah. Why don't you come over to my house <laughs> where the neighbor, oh. the next door neighbor had planted bamboo oh. like in the 90s. And their house, their, their whole yard is overrun. I mean, Ooh. it's worked its way around to the front porch. Ooh. So here's, this has, I mentioned this also because it has an impact on what we're saying about eliminating the problem in 90 days. They had a company come in, I think she said from Vineland, they specialize in bamboo removal. And the rough estimate was 10,000. <gasps> dollars oh my to goodness. eliminate bamboo and the, but hard. that's on her property that doesn't stop the neighbors right bamboo from reinvading so after she spends ten thousand after she spends right. ten thousand so we, we need we need to be able to find or at least for warn the neighbor i i think that exactly i think you need to um you know, you need to be able to provision, even though it's in their backyard and, you know, but somebody comes But it's growing comes to us, into a neighbor's front yard. I, I think yeah. you need to have that discussion, yeah. yeah. I, would, um, let, I would like, if this is possible, to give this to you, Mike, mm -hmm. for you to give to the lawyer mm -hmm. to make it legalese and then present to counsel. And if you would let Merrill know when the first reading is, um, I would like to come and uh, 
certainly they answer questions, but all of us. All make of us. Well, absolutely, yeah. I mean, if the, at at any first reading, okay. it would be good if there would be members there yes. because I prefer, um, you know, certainly it's the way I've done it with uh, the other committees. Have somebody there to answer the questions yes. present because I am only a liaison, mm -hmm. but I'll I will affect the the uh, process to get this in front Thank of council. Um, I, I'm not sure I should possibly even present it to the council members in advance. Well, they'll see it in advance. They'll, they'll see it anyhow Whatever because think it, it, can be, it can start out with discussion. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And discussion is good, and that's the time when I think it would be perfect for you folks to come. So instead of a first reading, oh, it would okay. be a discussion. A work, at a working session. Yeah, well, we call them working sessions. I don't know why. We do the same thing every every meeting. They're, they're not, they're all working. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, but I yeah, um, yeah I, well, then, I, I'd be glad to do that, but I think we need to think about some of these things okay, first. Right. I, I really would suggest not having um, the public being able to so we do should anything, say, but the public should be able to warn this to warn, to committee. Talk to the environmental committee yes. members. But not okay, necessary. so instead of reporting a violation to code enforcement, report a violation to the environmental commission. Uh, do you I, think I, it should be in there at all, or or should it be kind of understood? Um, mm. I I, I suspect it's going to be a problem if it's in there well, at all. You know, I I think it's the one step you can take. And, um, you know, why can't we communicate that at a later time once you get the ordinance I passed? I was going to say, at public discussion, when it goes up, in, up to City Hall, somebody will ask that question. And maybe we can answer it that way. Well, we're very happy to have you talk, tell us, right. blah, blah, blah. We right. can do it that what way. Is, but what is the difference? So it's not on, on that kind of record. But what is the difference? Um, any citizen may report a violation to take to us rather than code. Is that less onerous? It sounds less official. Okay. okay. Uh, and may I r recommend the ratting on your neighbor connotation <laughs> is the problem. Reporting, reporting, reporting. <laughs> I'm sorry, I said rat. Well, um, well no. I mean, that's I mean, that's, the, that's, that's the that's what the, word, the impression right? is going to be given. And but I th may I use the terminology of a uh, a plant of concern and not a notice of violation or a violation. Or a property of that. Service. May have an issue with invasive plants because when I I used to get notice of violations, used to. You know, I'd, I'd be very angry, and and so uh, uh, you may have a problem, and you know, so. But if I, I got, I had a, a uh, violation from code enforcement because I had flowers that had flopped over onto the sidewalk, <laughs> and I really didn't get angry, but I did call and say, "Did someone report me?" And he said, "No, I was just walking around." That happened. Okay. Yes. Which is it was what a, they I mean, it was doing. legitimate. Yeah. It was legitimate. Problem. I think a lot of this really boils back down to we need to educate people because of course new do. buyers are coming in like our neighbor has a backyard full of English ivy. Oh my goodness. Full. And it's Did they just under plant the it? No. It, it, they it, bought it that way. Oh, okay. And Birds plant it. We can't blame anybody anymore. <laughs> for well, English the ivy. previous owner obviously groomed it and kept it in. in yeah. But it's going under mm -hmm. everywhere. Of course it yeah. has. So part of this is educating people. Mm -hmm. And he knows that he needs to get rid of it, but he can't stay ahead of it. And now it's a rental property, so oh. it's creeping everywhere. Mm. But I really feel like yeah. if, if we could just educate our neighbors, you know, not, we've, in a, not in a noxious way, but just let them know that, you know, mm -hmm. we have had, I've only been a member here a few months, and we have had this conversation every single meeting. You are absolutely right, but we cannot keep educating, 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 and not have an ordinance on the books. We can do both. There's, we've talked about having a brochure that, I think that's the point, has a, a brochure, and we're going to print the, here it is, we're going to print this brochure. <clears throat> we can drop it in everybody's mailbox. We can hand it to renters or realtors. It can be part of the package. There's a lot of ways to do it. But unless we have something on the books, everybody is going to say, yeah, okay, fine, thank you. 
Also, and you're right. A when lot they, of people know that it's invasive and they should remove it, but they won't until they're they required won't. to do so. That's right. I think you're right. There probably isn't anyone who doesn't know about either bamboo or English ivy and what a problem it is. Um, and ivy's a lot easier to get rid of. Tell them to get agricultural vinegar and spritz it. And kill it overnight. But anyway. <laughs> um, I, so, I know because I just did that. <laughs> um, so we have to do both. And it's easy enough to distribute this. I have a box of these. I have uh, 2,000 of them. Is it? I don't, I don't know, again, what the, what the legal problems are. If we can't put it in every mailbox in Cape May, we can certainly give it to real estate people to hand out to owners and renters. Um, and not two-week renters, obviously, but to owners of rental property. Right. There are a lot of ways to educate, but unless there's something on the books, it's going to be useless. Exactly. But I also think that I know the city puts out newsletters, sometimes with a water bill, sometimes in other ways. And in that city newsletter, it, it's officially people will know there is an ordinance when the ordinance is passed and that the Environmental Commission of the City of Cape May through our secretary, you can report, and then, you know, you would have someone go out and look and help. Um, so that's just another way of getting the education out there. I don't believe that we legally can use mailboxes. Okay. I think we cannot. I think you're probably right. But we can right. give to we can give piles to the real estate agents. I would like to make a, a suggestion. There are many elderly people in the community that have invasives in their on their property, and they are not physically capable of removing them, mm -hmm. and do not have the financial means to do so. And I think that that will be a question and concern mm -hmm. that is brought to us, and we should have an answer ready, whether it's a team of volunteers that will come out and assist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've helped my elderly neighbor. She can't do it, so I do it for her. But that type of plan is something that I think would help us. I think you're right. There is um, a clause in here. Uh, the enforcing official may remove the invasive plant species and the town can, can then build a property owner, which isn't necessarily a good idea because pro possibly the property owner can't afford to do it. So you could modify this mm -hmm. to say that the enforcing official may remove the plant species or assign a group to do it, a group of volunteers or something. I mean, so we could, you know, easily um, modify, because you're right, we could easily modify that phrase to just say that. If you can't do it, somebody will help you do it. That's great. Put it in, in some legal form, um, which is why you would pass it on to the lawyer, and then he can rewrite it and it'll make sense. But why can we just do that? Can we just modify that phrase? Does anybody have an idea? The official may remove the invasive plant species or assign someone to do it or something to that thing. And then. Well, I think, you know, and, and let's talk about the case again of this bamboo. Right. I mean, I don't think anybody's removing that bamboo except for a professional right. company. And uh, my point is, is that we have to have some type of at least communication that the homeowner is allowed to have with the city to work out yeah. a plan. The 90 days can't be... Um, absolutely. You know, it can't be absolutely. It can't be firm for people that are looking at a $10,000 no. bill. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's got to be work out a plan. What, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? Right. Can this company do it over a period of months um, as a, you know, over within a year or something like that to get rid of it? So does my, que my question then is, does that go into the ordinance? Or does that go into a, a, a regulation to follow up the ordinance? I think you can just, I think you could probably have um, Chris add something mm -hmm. in here which gives the flexibility for code and the homeowner to work out a plan. Okay, I like um, that. I, yeah. I don't know how, what kind of, you know, if this committee wants to set what that time period is, but maybe you know maybe chris has a suggestion maybe even code has a suggestion but 
we need to give we need to give some people flexibility. Sure. Well, the 90, this isn't a matter of just tearing stuff oh, out. Oh, no, right. it isn't. No. Right. The 90 days is, and I think I wrote it that way or somewhere in there, is that you have 90 days to start doing something. Okay. You don't yeah. have 90 days to, to have to finish it. To complete it, it and right. And that's why there's, there's like a follow-up communication. So if you check back in a month and nothing's been done, I have a good roof story for that if you <laughs> want to hear about it. Right. Um, <clears throat> Then an, another notification goes out, but if, but you can also say that the owner has con communicated with the city or has done or the code enforcement or whatever and says, I called these people or I'm spraying something horrible on it or doing something. It's going to take a whole lot longer than 90 days to get rid of bamboo, mm -hmm. as we all know. But um, you could have that in there. So the 90 days is not you have to finish it in 90 days. The 90 days is you have to start doing something. Make an effort. Make reasonable. an effort. Right. There's also some issues where you have to wait for the poison ivy to die off oh, in the fall yes, you before do. you go out and remediate something. Yes. Yeah, I yes. think. Yes. And I. That's not an invasive. No, but well, sure if you're going to that's not the, the point. ivy. And there's poison ivy mixed right. in it. Yeah. yeah. Would like to remove the ivy after the poison ivy has died. I, I recommend right. that they don't burn it. Yeah, yes. I was reading some of the things in here that you you do to certain plants to dispose of them, and some things you have to wait till the fall. Yeah, you mm -hmm. spray them then, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess they'll yep. die over the winter, and right. then you clean them out. But the plan, you know, 90 days have a plan is, yes. is yeah. Yeah. probably a reasonable thing. That's it. And then, and then check back. And then check back. Have you started something? Or the, or the owner gets in touch and says, all right, I, I called the bamboo co guys, and this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm trying to find the 90 days again. Oh, it's... Um, all it's in the Cape pay is point, that this is rife uh, with very many different permutations. The plan. Of right. Justine asked what the plan, and I would like to suggest that the plan yes. is that we mark up anything else that we have for discussion, and we give it to Mike now, and he take it to Chris. This is great. Excuse me for being rude, but this has really gone on long enough. Mm -hmm. This is simple. Right. It, it should be. <laughs> okay. Um, Section 5D, the grace period, any property owner who is in violation of this ordinance will have 90 days from the effective date of the notice of violation to have um, a plan in place With to the remove city. them. A uh, plan in place, pardon me? Yes. Oh, we're looking at. Oh, well, I'm looking, looking at, at, at mine. Not, not the, not, not the, the Point Pleasant one. No, with um, in place with the city. Okay. So Instead of saying feet. all removed from the property, I right. will change it to say a plan in place with the city to remove management. the a management plan. management a man in, uh, yes. Okay. You, you could even be more specific than that because, in fact, they could start doing it. <laughs> right, they're allowed to start. <laughs> could could right. could either have begun the process or or have, have, or have a plan in place. Okay, <clears throat> okay. So is the plan down the road to have an inspector or someone to carry out these things, or are we just well? We have a code inspector in the city. Through this, that would carry well. Well, we would have, Yeah, code. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm just curious. I was just going to say that um, I was jumping backwards. I interrupted you. I just wanted to say that, look, we'll let Chris come yeah, up with I, the work. Yes. Yeah. And I'll just ask him to, you know, reflect what we've talked about here today. Okay. And then to send me that copy, and I'll get it to the committee okay. and see if everybody's good with that okay. before we, you know, present it uh, as a discussion item okay. for council. Okay. I will make notes and send it. I'll send it to every, I'll send it to Merrill, but I'll also send it directly to you to change what we talked about today. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. That's and then I, I do think we should, we need to talk about the education aspect of it. If, and if it involves mm -hmm. nothing more than giving this to real estate people to begin with, we could do that. If that's, I mean, I'm just suggesting that we could do that. I'm not and that they give this out to new, to new, to new yeah. owners. Owners. So are they still planting the purple, um, 
I have Lustre. seen it. It's all over town again. What is yeah. it? Yeah. Purple, Purple Loosestrife. Oh, no, I have really? a brochure that I have been putting on people's, like, in their door that says, if you have this beautiful flower, please get rid of it. And uh, the, those properties have gotten rid of have it. Have they? Okay. But now I have to drive okay, around again and put more brochures one. out. <laughs> Which I one are you getting rid of? Yeah. Um, Blue Stripe? Blue Stripe. I haven't seen it. It's beautiful. I have. It is. It's, it's beautiful. It actually is a very beautiful flower. It has it zero wildlife value, though. I mean, no butterflies. No, no, nothing goes no to it. No pollinators, butterflies. No. And it does extremely well at the New Jersey shore. Yeah, it does. It's, Unfortunate. It's in yeah. people's yards. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so I'm wondering if they're planning it. It's right here. There's Sometimes um, they are not planning it. A lot of these things get bird planted. Oh. Well, my, uh, my no. neighbor had it, and a um, nursery had told her it was infertile, which really isn't true. It's only infertile for a season, and then it's fertile again. Oh, really? Oh. And she took it out. Next summer, I got it. And I know it. It was like <laughs> on the other side of the fence. So I knew that it was from that. It's like a virus. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's beautiful. It is. It is. And I'm it's walking. I see it. It's yeah. like wait. <laughs> and you see it a block from the beach, and or a block from the mountains. Mm -hmm. I know that I know that uh, for a while landscapers were planting it because I saw it at a um, motel, mm -hmm. and I wrote I wrote to them to the because they had assigned the landscapers, and I said, I have to remove this. So you're basically educating them. Yes. And yes, helping yeah. them. And we can in do, a kind anybody of can do that. Way without yes. aggravating. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Anyone can do that. Um, and then we have to hope that landscapers pay attention to us, which apparently sometimes they do not. <laughs> Uh, and then that's a whole other question, which we're not going to get into here. Actually, I called one that I knew was planting it years ago, and I wanted to ask where they bought it right. so that I could get to that Girl. person mm -hmm. yeah. to see why they think it's infertile. And when I called, they said, we don't plant this anymore. Okay. So, so they're the learning. So there's our education. Yeah. Yep. Is that... So, can is, we, oh, go ahead. so I... I'm, I just have one other suggestion. Sure. I think it would be a good thing. I uh, don't want to take an ordinance and make it, uh, you know, too overwhelming. But um, I don't think it was handed out today. But there's a document that um, you provided in previously, and there's one paragraph here that I think, in the whereas with of this ordinance that you have that says eliminate the existence and proliferation of invasion plant species within its boundaries. Then it goes on for definitions. This one paragraph I think is very powerful and it possibly should be in that very oh, first definition. statement. And the, the, the paragraph reads, invasive plants have a disastrous effect on our environment. Invasive plants are non-natives, they grow quickly because the insects and diseases that normally keep them in check in their native habitats are absent. They thrive threatening native plants and animals by overtaking their habitat and food sources. That so statement so is really makes clear in. why yeah. we're doing this. Okay. Most, you know, most people might think this is stuff that just spreads, but it goes beyond mm -hmm. just right. spreading. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. okay. really- I, I agree. It's um, in, I think it's so I good. think adding that paragraph yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, would be right up front in Just the very beginning. Just in the whereas. Before you get to the definitions okay. would be Okay, that helpful. sounds good. Does everybody, any, I, I'll. It's in one of these samples. Nice. It's, are you reading it from? I, it's probably I don't old know. Ordinance. <laughs> I got but it. I'm going <laughs> to get, get it is, from I got a two-page thing you. some time ago. Because I don't want to. I can give it to Chris Gillen Schwartz and have him put it in there. I can put it in. If, if you, ha you have that document that I'm well, reading I'm from, take it. Take it. <laughs> That's fine. That's good. It was probably in an old ordinance. I've, I just read it, and now I can't remember where I read it, when going over these old ordinances. I like it. Yep. It's all in a jumble now here in my brain. OK. I will add it before I send it to you, Mike. OK. Thank and Meryl. you. All and right. Meryl. Yes, yes. Okay, can, should we go on? Yes, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've actually okay. settled this. We're moving on. We are. Mike's going to take it to Chris. 
I'm going to modify it, and then Mike's going to take it to Chris. Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be huzzahing just yet, but we are going forward. So we'll you know, we go good. until we Thank hit you. the brick wall. That's okay. all we can do. Okay. <laughs> um, follow up on the Ocean Fest. I Dustin, actually, would you like to? Can I have some pictures? Say, uh, say something, since you were so involved. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Really? <laughs> it was wonderful uh, to those of you who didn't attend. Um, there were several hundred, if not a thousand guests, and everyone loved our table and demonstrations. I think next year it'll be even more popular. It seems that most of the guests were individuals who already had an interest in environmental protection and sustainability. Hopefully next year uh, we can grow um, upon the methods that we had for outreach and find those individuals who are not already inclined to attend that type of event. And I, I think that um, as the commission member who worked with the planning committee of the festival itself, that. I will actually recommend more live music and food to attract people that might not care so much about environmental and um, ocean stewardship, but will go for the entertainment. I think that might be a nice. There's way some pictures to I'm passing around. Lure people mm -hmm. in. There, if I was on that uh, planning committee as well, and if you, I think it might have been one of the meetings that you missed or might have been during that, they did discuss food, and it was getting too complicated. Yeah, I remember. Um, and now there's a whole year for people to, to plan ahead and add more food. They did want to, but it was just, well, I know this, and I know this, and I don't know that, and I don't know if they're available, and it just seemed simpler because this is such a, it was a, um, rough draft actually of of what people want to do but you're absolutely right there needed to be more more food and and some non-alcoholic beverages one of the uh, notable takeaways also was that there were more tourists than locals yes mm -hmm. which i found to be striking um, and no one knew about the water conservation ordinance locals and tourists alike um, so we spent a lot of time discussing that with everyone that came by the table um, with the hopes of, you know, take this home, leave it in the rental you're staying at. You know, we gave them the brochures and allowed them to just tell your neighbors, tell your realtors, tell your landlord, tell everyone. Um, so I think it was a success and worth all of the effort. People yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. It was yeah. it was festive. There were a lot of kids. And, and at our table, at least, and we were next to the uh, MUA table as well. Right. Kids were, um, I think, kind of knowledgeable. They were not really surprised. Mm -hmm. They knew some of this stuff. It seemed familiar to them. Yeah, uh, you know. Charlotte made these awesome octopus, octopus. jellyfish <laughs> my, uh, activities. I have to say mine fell my apart son apart. is sleeping with his. Every night. <laughs> oh. he won't let go of it. <laughs> mine fell apart. Um, but um, we also we provided these recipes for all natural. Um, pest control agents or pesticides. <laughs> and then I did go ahead and also make a recipe for um, uh, all natural herbicides and fertilizers. Mm -hmm. And they were distributed to the garden club, but I can email them to the rest of the commission as well. There were so requests that for that to too. Pack it. Right. People would see them being handed out and they'd come over and say, can I have one, can I have one? Mm -hmm. um, go ahead, I'm sorry. I just wanted to add about the radio station, which actually worked. And um, we did um, a couple of really nice interviews. Kit Marlowe gave a really good talk on, on, he brought a big display of invases and he draped them over over the table and, every, and um, talked I, probably a good 15 minutes about each one. He was kind of waving them in the air, which kind of doesn't work on the radio, but it was okay. <laughs> and then, um, Mark Allen did some interviews in the afternoon with some of the uh, people who were working on the boat project. And uh, according to people who were listening, it actually went over the air and was very successful. So we will plan on continuing to do that as well. I was, I was thrilled to see so many environmental groups, uh, including the surf riders. Mm -hmm. They helped this commission so much to get the plastics into effect and 
Um, they had one demonstration project. They brought rain barrels, and then anybody who walked by were invited to decorate, to paint these rain yeah. barrels. I mean, kids were there brushing things on the side of the rain barrels and parents, and uh, so that was delightful. And also, I saw a group of high school kids. They were Jeff's students at regional, and he had them all involved in helping people understand something that would sink and float in, with their little creations that the children put together. So it was a delightful um, array of activities for families and for visitors of all ages. So, yeah, it was, it it was, was a good It was actually a lot of fun. We were working hard behind the tables and enjoying it. It, was, it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't a burden at all. We really enjoyed it. And I was on the front desk checking people in and there were over 200 and that doesn't count those who were coming in from the sides and all. Yeah. 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 I have to. People uh, coming back out were all smiles and kids had things in their hands and it was yeah. a good time. The kids love making things. Right. I have to agree with Justine and you, Meryl, that it, w it was a very well received uh, celebration. Mm -hmm. We were also we fortunate do it that again. it was a perfect day. Oh, yes. It wasn't too hot. Yeah. There was a breeze. It was so, you know, that helps. That helps. Mm -hmm. you, you know, maybe next year as as opposed, not as opposed, but in addition to handing out the, we can like Espoma, like little bags of organic fertilizer yeah. or something like that. And so this is where you can buy, not necessarily brand. I, I know you can't brand things, but this is an organic fertilizer mm -hmm. that you can use in your garden and so on. Mm -hmm. and, Anyway, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah. One one extra plus I felt, um, Justine took her resume. Uh, a young, a, a, a parent stopped by and said, my, my senior daughter is so-and-so college in Philadelphia, I think Temple. Mm -hmm. And she was setting up, um, her daughter was, projects were to set up um, tree gardens and plant gardens all over the roofs in Philadelphia. That was her senior project. Mm. And she said to us, um, we'd love her to intern somewhere. Can you use some help? Free. <laughs> <laughs> so I passed it on to I Justine. I emailed her maybe a week ago. So I haven't heard back yet, but um, she was wonder, her mother was wonderful. And mm -hmm. that actually, to build on that, I have also lined up two high school kids who would love to be volunteer interns and help with Good. anything we need, redoing brochures or creating newsletters, um, you know. Maybe they could be also the volunteers to help remove you invasives. Took, uh, yeah. That was exactly my thought. They could be. They're the, young and strong. Yes. That, oh. I thought exactly the same thing. <laughs> we're, we're going a team. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. younger generation. Yes. With, with some other, I mean, we wouldn't want them to make ju just that. But they would do some other more, shall we say, constructive things, but that would be perfect. Yeah, well, it's time consuming, yeah. and it's often what is left unattended to by yes. us. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. really mm -hmm. help with that. <clears throat> um, sure. So this, it's not on the agenda, but it's related to the ocean, so to just... Um, Go ahead. Off to off of the Ocean Fest, um, we have not done a marine biodiversity survey of the harbor since '97. Boy. Mm. And uh, a few months ago, I told you all about this new technology to remove marine debris. They're they're called sea bins, and I've spoken to a few members of the council about it, and they love the technology and said that the Basically, we just need to identify a grant that we would like to apply for, um, and that it would be wonderful to bundle a new survey of the biodiversity of the harbor, and then create um, like a log of marine debris and take all of that data and use that to drive forward um, a, a study and acquiring this technology to remove the debris. So I would really love to form a subcommittee with other members of the commission to help me do this. 
Kate May is <laughs> Kate May is considering. I wouldn't say hiring. A harbor master. A harbor master. Yeah, yeah that would be nice. And I, I, think, I saw somewhere, probably in the uh, Star and Wave, that they want a, a I want to say volunteer, a free harbor master. Uh, they don't uh, want to pay. It was, it's, it's volunteer. A volunteer position. It is. Yeah. Yes, but it's primarily um, the main purpose is yeah. to have all these advantaged boats. Right. Oh, wow. Well, Cape May only has half or a quarter of the heart. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but what uh -huh. we want to do is make sure that that section of the harbor that is ours and our kids sail in mm -hmm. and the, the um, people are out there net fishing, whatever, uh, we want our part of the harbor to be safe. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the job is. We have uh -huh. okay. uh, four. Oh wow! Uh, oh good. Oh good. Yeah. Wow. Make make it five. Next month, or I think it's in July sometime. Might yeah, if it come, becomes effective in July, uh, they'll be in place and hopefully we'll be protected from that. Yeah. I lived in a, a community like this before I moved here that had a harbor that I think was owned by both the county and the town, and and there was a harbor master there, and I found I never gotten over the amazement that there's no harbor master here this whole area is surrounded by water and boats and creatures that live in them <laughs> and we have basically no or very little enforcement of that it's it's just stunning it's one of very few in the northeastern u.s yeah without, mm -hmm. without yeah how could you not you have well, if anyone is interested in working on this with me, I would love the. What's the name of the the? Um... Here's the um, old biodiversity um, marine survey. Um, the technology is called a sea bin. Um, I'll email you the link. Like a, the big screen. It's essentially a trash receptacle that sits. The top of it sits at the surface of the water, and it, through uh, like the motion of the water and currents, attracts debris as large as a gallon laundry jug and as small as microparticles and even oil into the receptacle and then they can be emptied. But this project is you know, multi-phase in that we really need a new biodiversity survey. And then we also need to log and, and catalog it through photos where the debris is piling up apply for grants for those receptacles and uh, like identifying them so doing the research um, through the DEP or EPA to find them and then let the city know okay here's a funding opportunity let's write the proposal um, I would just really like a hand I, so okay cool. I go out in my kayak and look at yeah, the yeah. <laughs> we need so. we need my crew we did a uh, biodiversity of all of the land plants in Cape May County. So oh, if we wow. get a good grant, we might be able to get him. Well, back. we might have enough money in our budget to pay for the survey and then only need the grant for the actual C-bin technology. Clean, clean up. I'm not sure. We would have to get a quote, I guess, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. what those costs. Mm -hmm. um, Charlotte was actually in the head of making that happen all those years ago, but we couldn't actually find uh, the name of the individual who conducted it in the past. Right. So where do the marinas stand with this? Can they be the marinas that are in leading into the harbor? Are they would in you, what like, sense interested in? Oh, participating? Yes, yeah, so some of them are in Lower Township, oh. and some of them are in Cape May City. And ideally, it would be like a cross municipality collaboration. Um, and be, if we are able to secure the funding for it, the cost of maintaining and operating the technology is very low. It's not expensive. Mm -hmm. And I did speak um, with Jeff. And he is very interested in having the high school kids involved in cataloging the debris. Where is it coming from? Where is it going? Um, why does it build up in this 
area of the marina and not that area based upon tides and currents. currents and um, so, it, you know, if we can build it out as a community-wide effort, I think it will be most effective. Um, but. Anyway. I think I saw that. It's a very simple mechanical process. It it's is. just, it's basically a tub and a screen. Mm -hmm. It's, it's non-involved. There's not a, no it, electronics in it. There's you pull it behind a boat. Yeah. And it, up. And it just We just, we really need to start with a new, a new biodiversity survey. Yeah. So yes. Okay. It's the first step. Mm -hmm. Know that ANJAC does offer periodically through the year, um, some opportunities for grants, and then there are DEP grants um, that we can look at, and actually even EPA grants, they're really rough, I mean, <laughs> but uh, we, we have at least something to start with, um, and that could be uh, the model for filling out the grant. So um, we can certainly look online to, to see if any of those would be applicable and how soon. Right. Yeah, the deadlines are varied throughout the year. I did look through a number of the websites, um, but there's just a lot, so. Yeah, right. Would the biodiversity include Lower Township and the... Well, we would just do the harbor, is that, Joe? Yeah. yeah, but that includes Lower Township. Right. Well, yeah, I don't think that... Uh, is, that's the question, I mean, are we I gonna draw know. a line? I don't think you can draw boundaries in the harbor. You <laughs> no. just have to look. I don't know. <laughs> and Lower Township doesn't have an environmental commission for us to liaison with. Okay. So we would have to go to their council. I don't know what their, their council is. Sounds very interesting. It does, indeed. It does. Okay, I'll send out some emails about it, then yes. it's fine. Mm -hmm. Gee, let's go out in the water and look at the garbage. <laughs> And the last thing on the uh, agenda, or the second to the last, is follow-up suggestions pertaining to the suggestions of New Jersey State and Emergent Energy Master Plan. Well, this, this came to um, my attention through an email probably um, the middle of May, because with our city master plan, we certainly were looking um, through the years about um, having as much green energy in the city as possible. And, um, and I had looked at comments and sent comments to the state before this. So this was a follow-up and it was 250 pages long. <laughs> and I felt like I needed some help. Uh, so I was I was lucky that you raised your hand and um, we worked on this together. And um, so basically I'll, I'll read it to you or not. Did you sure. all get a copy? No. No. Okay, so this is quick. Do you wanna read half and I'll read no. half? Sure. Okay. Well, Great. I could send it out too to everybody. Okay, then we don't have to, read. well, all right. Well, you can read the beginning at least. Okay, so the well, city of Cape that. May submits our validating oh. report for the support of New Jersey's Energy Master Plan Pathway to 2050. This compendium offers documents of endorsement for proactive methods to deliver and expand clean energy solutions through a variety of strategies and goals. As we confirm Cape May City's formal endorsement of updated 2019 New Jersey Energy Master Plan, that was the one that I was commenting on before. We have been encouraged and committed to pledge policy and monetary resources for the city of Cape May that preserve and enhance the health of Cape May's environment. In part, New Jersey's master plan has legitimized the choices that Cape May has made while focusing on green issues. Cape May City Council has made its operation greener and more environmentally friendly by conducting energy audits of the city's facilities and implementing the recommend, recommended upgrades and improvements through grants, rebates, and including the installation um, of a coming of implementing an electric vehicle charging station. Solar power has been recommended for all city buildings and solar power has been installed 
at our desal plant, the city of Cape May utilizes green purchasing and tries to buy locally. Likewise, we have been recycling and we are trying to have water quality improvements. Cape May City advocates shifting energy production away from fossil fuels to more sustainable, renewable sources. As noted, the Cape May City Elementary School was provided with funds through Sustainable Energy Grant in 2012 to install a turbine on the property. The wind energy reduces costs for the city and provides an energy component to the STEM curricula. Moreover, in October 2021, National Wildlife Magazine noted on page 48 that over 100 nonprofit labor unions and environmental groups have signed on in a unity statement supporting offshore wind. Notably, New Jersey Audubon Society added its signature to this statement. Cape May City provides visitors with transit jitney service during the busy tourist season in order to reduce the number of automobiles driving through the city, thereby reducing carbon production. The city also provides an incredible detailed bike map, which encourages all cars to, to park all cars and bike through three connecting municipalities while enjoying the wonderful natural sites. Furthermore, Cape May City Council has authorized the addition of two electric vehicles to, to the fleet. As Cape May's local economy is tightly linked to a healthy environment, it is in the best interest of the governing body to take care of its citizens second homeowners and visitors, and thus the city proposes to promote itself as a more carbon neutral champion. Energy touches the lives of every person, every day, in every way. Action takes, taken aggressively and immediately as proposed by New Jersey's Energy Master Plan may well assist in keeping Cape May high and dry now and in the future. Therefore, we endorse New Jersey's Energy Master Plan as it sets forth its carefully examined goals across a broad spectrum. Um, to implement the integrated energy plan, which allows for the development of a multi-pronged approach to clean energy through a least cost model, decarbonize the transportation sector, launch the Pathway to Plug-In program, which supports the growth of electric vehicles, including through vehicle rebates and the installation of more electric vehicle recharging ports, accelerate deployment of renewable energy and distribute energy resources, develop 7,500 megawatts of offshore wind energy by 2035, maximize local solar development or remote solar sites, seek non-wire solutions on state-funded projects, including new construction and rehabilitations, initiate a new incentive delivery system to motivate additional carbon neutral generation using a competitive approach to stimulating competition and investment. Increase New Jersey's overall energy efficiency through support of both in-state investment and regional coordination. Manage and reduce peak demand. Strengthen buildings and energy codes and appliance standards. Reduce energy consumption and emissions from the building sector. Decarbonize and modernize New Jersey's energy system Maintain existing gas pipeline system reliability and safety while planning for future reductions in natural gas consumption. Support community planning and action within an emphasis on encouraging and supporting participation by low and moderate income and environmental justice communities. Expand the clean energy innovation economy 
by developing clean energy services and <coughs> products. Support growth of in-state clean energy industries through workforce and vocational training programs and clean energy finance solutions to allow a pivot to meet changing industry needs. Adopt new clean energy technologies as they become cost competitive. At this time, we are experiencing a disruption to traditional energy models by clean energy systems, as periods of transition are optimal moments for advancement by working to incorporate New Jersey's energy master plan. The city of Cape May will participate in aligning environmental and economic goals, a more sustainable future for all, even while maintaining our historic Victorian seaside identity. I have a, one question. Did you say s over 7,000 megawatts? 7,500 is what's in the plan. Do you know what the Atlantic City? I do not. There are two megawatts. Is that all? How many? I believe so. Each one? Each one. Yeah, so oh. this so that, is that's the equivalent of 3,500 wind turbines. It's I mean, that across the state. I, I'm, my math may be wrong, I, but that sounds kind of, I don't want to rain on any parade, but that sounds like an awful lot of windmills or wind turbines, I'm sorry. Um, so maybe I can look at the math again. I, I, may, I may be misinterpreting that statement. Um, that's we can look at the energy master plan. It does outline them. It also may be dependent upon the size of the turbine. Well, the and how average often they're running. I'm not an expert um, on wind. Oh, well, I'm, I'm minus that. But the average wind turbine is about two meg. Okay. Uh, and that's the commercial size that you see on uh, ridge lines and stuff like that. So, I mean, if you want to put 3,500 turbines off the coast of New Jersey, <laughs> Mike, what do you think about that? <laughs> Even for those I'm, of us I, who you love know, I'm, technology. I'm certainly not a, a turbine expert. And, well, let's, uh, well, let's look at You know, if we it, look at Europe, it. That's yeah, a, look I, at any city in Europe, they don't use them all offshore. They have every... Mm -hmm. um, commercial space filled with turbines. Wherever the, you drive, you see them. The see plan that? does call for that offshore because this mm. data was lifted from mm. the plan. Yeah. Um, but perhaps there's um, detail. I, I may have the math right. wrong, to be honest with you, but I just did a quick. Well, let's look into it because yeah, I highly it. doubt that the state is proposing to put 3,500 offshore windmills off of our Probably not. <laughs> I don't think so. Not. Uh, yeah, I don't think that'll ever happen. It must yeah. be the whole. So there must be, okay. be but you're right. some all glitch all that we're overlooking. Mm -hmm. uh, Let me, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do the math when I get back, and I'll, I'll do some research and see if I'm missing, like, over a 24-hour period or something. Mm -hmm. along yeah, those well, lines. and we can also send you the chapter on the offshore wind energy from the master plan. There's a whole section on it. I know some people who worked <laughs> on it, um, I, I, who, who did the uh, avian so. study, so. Yeah, for no. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Justine. Sure. Thank you. And, and Charlotte, Charlotte Thank you. did yeah. a lot of it as well. Justine, would you send me your re your report and I can include it? So On the master plan? What you just, just what you oh, just read. I, um, yeah, I, I think I sent it to you. I'll send it again, though. Yeah. So I, have it. I can include it in the minutes and everybody can oh, read it. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. It okay. And this is the public portion. Trish, do you have anything you want to say? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> May I ask a request? What? Um, if, I have um, one little addition. Oh, did you want to? Oh, uh, just one minute. Sure. Um, I just got a copy of the annual drinking water quality report. Um, a lot of people don't realize that Americans are very fortunate to have very good drinking water. And 
you read this report and you're not quite sure what it means at some times, but if I could ask the, uh, the city manager for the desal plants or the water quality department to come give us a presentation to explain this. Oh, sure. No, I don't see why not. Okay, I, I'll Yeah, I, I think it, we would have, um, we would probably have Bob, um, Rob Comiskey is the okay, I know Rob. water guy. Um, unless Eric Krasinski would, would like to do it, but um, I, I'd be glad to ask the question. What? And come if everybody wants to hear about uh, the latest report, yes. why not? I think, it's, I think it's a good idea. Well, by the way, everything is within parameters, but the terminology is somewhat uh, City of Cape May Water Department routinely monitors for contaminants in our drinking water according to federal and state laws. The table shows the results of our monitoring from January 1 to December 31st. The state allows us to monitor for some contaminants less than once per year because of the concentrations of these contaminants do not change frequently. <clears throat> Being a desal plant, um, I, I'm thinking there's got to be a lot of gap in in, in these readings some at times because of demand. Mm -hmm. You know, if you noticed your water quality is highly chlorinated now that uh, 60,000 people are in town. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, I just, uh, maybe I'll, I'll reach out to him and give him a call and see if he can. Um, yeah, well, if, uh, if you would like to do that, that's not a problem, uh, but you then you should start with Eric because he's the boss. Eric? Um, well, actually, you should start with Mike Bull and just say that you'd like to have one of his um, public works. Yeah. Okay. People. Mike Bull? Um, that's fine, yeah. Sure. I mean, yeah. you can send him an email. Is that acceptable? Say, yeah, sure. Okay. Absolutely. No, no, no. <laughs> so this piggybacks on to water and, and, in particular, water conservation. And um, <clears throat> there was a recent report um, by, about the state's water supply, the New Jersey Division of Water Supply and, and Geology maintains that most of, of New Jersey is in really good shape for enough water, except for Cape May City. Mm -hmm. And it says, currently, the only public water system that does not have required firm capacity is Cape May City. And rectifying that deficit is going to be central component to Cape May's plans to um, removing some of the iron and um, and also building our new desal plant. Desal plant, plant right. right. Yeah. Yes. Um, but with that said, I guess I see a lot of entitled people in the city of Cape May who don't understand water conservation. And that's, that's rough because those of us who are water savers and, you know, being really careful. And we had a member of the commission. She was wonderful. Rachel Palermo is now retired. And she used to stand with a stopwatch outside of the shower while her grandkids were <laughs> taking <laughs> showers and she would click it on and she'd say okay your three minutes are up and that's she'd it. bang on the door and say, soap or no soap get out right that's it get out kid <laughs> but um i i just guess i think as i read this stuff i wonder if we shouldn't be asking the largest users of water and those who are using it abusively to pay more Are we allowed to do that? Is everybody metered? Well, when you say pay more, like you're proposing more per gallon. I mean, obviously, we all pay more in the peak demand periods. Sure. Um, you know, to um, suggest that, say, you're talking about a hotel mm -hmm. um, in town, that they pay more for water um, that's, you know, can we do that? Uh, We'd have to ask the it's pretty lawyers difficult. that question. Yeah, that's but. pretty difficult to do. 
It is, it is. But, um, you know, we need to find ways to, to better <laughs> conserve water for sure. And I'm a, I think that one of the main problems, again, it's another education thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm stunned <clears throat> at the number of people that don't know about just as simple as not being able to wash your car um, from Memorial Day to Labor Day um, on the weekends. I actually did not and know that. And even then, not they're that only allowed to do it. I think of whatever. I didn't know every that. other day, uh, you know, right. depending on your address. Nobody is really familiar with all of the no, water no. regulations that are in place. Mm -hmm. Clearly, they're not being followed. Yeah. They're not. The classic I can tell example. you that when we started with water conservation so many years ago, when we needed our first desal plant. And we let the businesses know, and they were phenomenal. I can't tell you how they put pressure on the people visiting the hotels. Mm -hmm. Please, if you don't need your linens washed today, mm -hmm. put this on your door. Mm -hmm. You know, please make sure that you flush only when you really need to. Mm -hmm. And then we had the low flow tank, you know, toilets right. trading in. Please, the restaurants would say, if you don't need a glass of water, right. please. You know, there was a little tag, mm -hmm. a little it. tent right. on the restaurant tables. So, but it happened so immediately. The co cooperation was phenomenal with those people who were in business 30 years ago, 25 years ago. And I think probably some of that education needs to go back to the businesses and let them know the people who come here should not feel privileged in my estimation about our resources. End of story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you want to charge more, Mike? Do you want to take it to Amtrak? I, yeah, I'm, you know, <laughs> businesses, uh, they, they certainly have it um, you know, pretty tough sometimes mm -hmm. um, in town. There, you know, every, everything's going up for them as well. I'm not sure that charging more is the right answer. Um, again, they they clearly pay more the the more well, they, they use. They pay more for your and use, it, and it's yeah. a big expense. We all know what our water bill looks like. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, you know, am I am I a fan of that? Not really. If you want to come to a council meeting and raise your hand and make a suggestion. Um, I, I think once again that, that a, a good little brochure, I remember we used to get something in the mail with our water bill and I don't think we do now. After we recovered from fainting and then we would read everything. Um, <clears throat> but I, I did not know, for example, about not washing your car. Not that yes, we do that. They, those, that information came mm -hmm. every spring yeah. with our um, our water bill. It still it, came, it still does. And I, I thought I saw it. Yeah. This year. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm afraid people just aren't reading. They get right to the water bill and go, "Oh dear God." Well, you faint <laughs> and you get your water bill, and then after you recover, you're probably not interested in reading any more yeah. literature. Um, but it is interesting reading. Uh, um, roundtable event that I attended last week, I brought this up and they recommended creating a pamphlet and mm -hmm. taking yeah. it to the Chamber of Commerce. Um, anyone who's registered through Airbnb, mm -hmm. should, right. they should help us distribute it mm -hmm. to um, the landlord that way and going to every single real estate agency yeah. and asking them to be handed out to all That's great. incoming well, renters. Yeah. We, can, we can do something very similar to this. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, it doesn't even have to be this pretty because we don't have to draw any pictures or do anything. <laughs> Just say, these are the rules. These are the regulations. These are the recommendations. And by the way, put a sensor on your sprinkler system so when it rains, mm -hmm. it won't go on. And maybe you should uh, set it up so that it doesn't water the sidewalk. It, and it's actually a requirement. You, if you have a, an irrigation yeah. system, it must have rain sensing. Right. Well, I can name a couple that do not. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always and, that, and that make the sidewalks nice and clean and wet and do not touch Well, that's plants. the other thing is, is um, I just watched a guy across from the Wawa yesterday hose his entire driveway down, mm -hmm. which I believe is a specific 
it's a specific That's a regulation. That's a specific one. Yeah. That is Andrew, not a What could possibly be on it? Period. Um, <laughs> round up. He was, get off the he was just finishing up washing off his driveway, and I'm going. And it rained. God. Yes. He had probably just washed his car. <laughs> yeah. I, I hate to rain on everybody's parade again. I'm a kind of a glass half empty kind of guy sometimes. The problem is, is that there's no incentive for the biggest water users in Cape May, the city of Cape May, which is the Airbnbs, the hotels, the people who are staying there to conserve water. There's an incentive for those who pay the water bill because it costs them so much, but the incentive has to come from people who are staying there. Mm -hmm. uh, to say, and you, we've all stayed in hotel chains where they say, we don't wash your sheets until you leave, mm -hmm. or we wash them every other day. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in a lot of restaurants, that water glass of water thing still holds. You, there are most, many places you do not get a glass of water unless you ask for it. Um, so that the if, if a hotel gets a water bill, it's going to be pretty awful. But what they need to do is hand it off to their customers. What they do is then raise the rates to their hotel room, and then, as Mike says, mm -hmm. they begin to suffer because mm -hmm. of. Yeah, I, I, I'm not it's, so sure it's that not raising a, it's, the rate is not is an a, easy is a good issue idea. to resolve. I'm, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I see you all as. I, ambassadors to the Chamber of Commerce, to the realtors, to going out and talking to them and getting them involved again, just as we were 25, 30 years ago. Right. So yeah. I'd love to see you all sign up with a group and let them know that this is really not, this is not an unlimited supply. Every time we have to put a new desal plan in, every time we have to go to another layer or wherever geologically, we may be at the end of a line at some right. point. Sooner or later, you're going to get to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what about the newspaper ads that we put in? Maybe one could be about water usage. That's a good idea. I'm happy you brought yeah. that up because John uh, Kutza wanted to know what we were going to do for July or, yeah, for July. And I told him. Um, I would have to get back to him after today because the commission needed to vote. So I had only approved it last week or last month or earlier this month for the one month oh. so that the, you could vote on what would happen moving forward. This is about putting ads? That um, ad that we looked at mm -hmm. at the last meeting, mm -hmm. the, did you see it in the paper? I haven't seen the yeah. paper. Okay. Um, so. Do you want to run it again? Do you want it to be the same size? Do you not want to run it? What week do you want to run it? I didn't see it. So. Um, anybody? I would. I would say run it again, but perhaps add water conservation. Yeah. It is. Things. It is it on water. there, okay. but yeah. all of the environmentally um, forward ordinances are listed. So. Um, from the water conservation, the encouraging green energy mm. on municipal buildings. There's information about the ports, the electric. I have a copy yeah. of it. Hold on. Do you want to make a? Uh, I'm going to. We're running late, and I'm uh, going to have yeah. to conclude it. So, do you want to make a uh, <coughs> proposal, um, and we'll vote on it? Okay. Do you want to do that by email then? Because I should let him know right away. Oh, sure. We could do it right now. Can't we? Yes. Unless uh, people object. I mean, can you vote? Do you? I. I Let's email? make it. No. No, no. Right now. Vote now. <laughs> That's what we're. <laughs> Do we want to run the same ad again, in right. other words? Yeah. yeah. You still have budget money. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, I mean, if you want to do that. It's $219 for the. Oh, that's a good. Page. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So the weekend, like look for, it would be next week because then it's the week before July 4th Good. when there are lots oh, of tourists good. in town. Okay. So. so somebody make a proposal make, and then someone second it. And make we'll a motion. Go. I propose to run the quarter page ad in the Star and Wave. I and second it. And okay. who's in favor? I. I, oh, I can't vote. Can't vote. Yeah. <laughs> Barb. <laughs> yeah. But I am. No, I can't vote. 
You can't. Oh, I didn't know that. City employee. You were a member. Okay. No. Well, I'm in favor of it. I'm in favor of it. And I'm not a voter. <laughs> oh, that's right. I can't vote either unless there are missing members. Justine, yes, you can. I'm, I'm the alternate number two. I can't vote unless there are not enough voting members present. Well, that's true right now. Yeah. Four. So you there can vote. Do we have a minion? We do have a minion. <laughs> Four okay. out of seven. Okay. It's passed. Yeah, All right. Okay. Please run. So, okay. Okay. Great. And may I have a motion to adjourn, please? Oh, please. Second. Okay. We are adjourned for this meeting. June meeting. Chris, I just realized. Uh, so, hold on. Yeah, I just realized. So it's so developed it that cumulative amount yeah. by 2035, oh, yeah. not each year. Uh, okay. Where she live? Oh. Oh. Well, yeah, now must be brutal. So how does she get here? Excuse me. Thank you. <laughs>